my friends are since. When I was a wee guy, I really wanted to learn how to play the piano properly. And so I got a teacher and I went to lessons every week. But unfortunately, here we are some decades on and my musical theory knowledge is still not what you would call uh, excellent. Part of the reason for that simply comes down to the fact that I wasn't a particularly patient person. And also, I didn't really like being told what to do. So if I had to learn music that somebody else had written and I didn't really like, then I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't practice. So there's no big surprise there, really. But the other romantic story or the, the idea I have in my head about why I'm not that great with musical theory is that I've always enjoyed making music more when I'm just finding things that sound good together as opposed to picking certain notes because somebody else has told me that they go together in a scale. Now that kind of cavalier attitude or approach to making music is all fine and well if your only ambitions are to play in an out of tune scuzzy punk band, but if you want to do something a bit more interesting, for example make use of arpeggios, then having some kind of understanding or grasp of musical theory can be fairly handy. If you try and create an arpeggio without any knowledge of music theory, then it can very quickly sound awful. But if you do get it right, then, well, listen to this. good does that sound? Now if you're not sure what an arpeggio is, it's effectively the notes of a chord broken up. So instead of playing them all at the same time, you play them individually or one after the other. Arpeggiations are very common in the world of electronic music as I'm sure you know, and they sound especially good when they are played on synthesizers. Given the nature of electronic instruments, you can get some really incredible results by varying each individual step slightly, or just by playing an arpeggiation and tweaking the filter as you go. If you've ever heard the Stranger Things theme tune, then I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. That's basically just a big long arpeggio with a kind of meaty analog synth filter in there, and it sounds incredible. In order to achieve this kind of result on a traditional sequencer, if you were going to plot out each individual note, then things would get pretty complicated pretty quickly, and you would also need to understand musical theory to a fairly decent degree, or else it would sound crap. And this is where the MIDI Cake ARP comes in. The MIDI Cake ARP is a four channel standalone MIDI arpeggiator, and I'll come on and talk a wee bit more about what exactly that means later on in the video. But for now, I first saw this when when it came out. I think it was a video by Starsky Carr or something like that, and I was immediately intrigued as somebody that likes to play about with arpeggiations but who doesn't really have the musical theory knowledge to back it up. The MIDI Cake ARP is made by somebody called Chris Brown here in the United Kingdom, so I got in touch with them and they very kindly offered to send me out a unit to have a look at, which is uh, what I'm doing now. Now there's a lot of features packed into this little box and I don't want to spend this whole video just reading out the manual to you effectively or going through every single menu item to explain what it is. Instead, I want to give you an overview of the device and explain why I think it's particularly cool and maybe it'll be interesting to you as well. <laughs> Now before I go on and talk about any of the specific features of the ARP, let's have a quick look at the build quality and the form factor of the thing itself. The chassis or the case seems to be made entirely of metal and it's got this nice smooth glossy finish on there. The buttons have got a really nice soft feel to them and this might sound ridiculous but they kind of remind me of a particular type of Haribo Sweetie. Uh, you know, not cheap or nasty but very pleasant to touch, very tactile and squishy in a wonderful way. 
I have to say that I was really genuinely pretty impressed when it arrived, not least because this is coming from a small independent manufacturer and they've done a really great job with it. In some of the videos I've seen, the device itself can look a bit bland and I don't know whether that's because of the way that people are grading their footage or something, but I'm happy to report that in person it actually looks much cooler. In some ways it kind of reminds me of a PS5 controller, uh, which might sound like a derogatory statement but I promise you it is not. When it comes to connectivity, things seem to be fairly simple, albeit rather interesting at the same time. We've got power which is supplied over a USB-B type connection, which also gives you MIDI USB functionality. We've then got two full-sized MIDI DIN jacks for input and output, hallelujah. And then we've got a USB-A connection, which allows the MIDI Cake ARP to act as a host, meaning that you can use other USB MIDI devices such as a keyboard controller without having to go through a computer as an intermediary step, which is really cool indeed. In the box I found a USB connection for power and also a single DIN MIDI cable. For a very quick overview of the functionality of this device, we've got four independent MIDI arpeggiators, each of which can have their MIDI channel assigned separately. Each one of these has got a whole host of different parameters that you can tweak, including groove, uh, gate length, rhythm, octave range, and a whole host of other different things. There's four different arpeggiation modes. So we've got a straight up traditional arpeggiator where each of the notes are played sequentially. You've then got chord mode where each of the notes are played simultaneously, although you can kind of vary it and delay the notes a wee bit using the built-in functions in there. And then we've got a couple of other modes called drone and pad, which basically let you play about with sustain in interesting ways. Now you can use the MIDI Cake ARP in a variety of different ways, one of which is where you just set up your individual patterns with the various arpeggiators, hit play and then let it run free and make beautiful music with whatever synthesizers or devices that you've got connected. However, you can also play it live and there's a selection of buttons at the bottom set up like a keyboard where you can shift the root note and also the type of chord or scale that you're playing. <laughs> So there are already loads of devices out there in the market, including sequencers and synthesizers, that have got their own arpeggiation functionality built in. And that begs the question of why you would want a dedicated standalone unit like this. And the answer to that is fairly simple in that the functionality that you get in sequencers and synthesizers for arpeggiations is usually quite limited. And the MIDI Cake ARP gives you so much more control over the individual elements and the complexity of the resulting arpeggiations. Not only can you change various parameters like I've already explained, but you can modulate those different parameters and there's loads of different control over the modulation including LFO rates, shapes, times and a whole host of other things. All of this can be triggered and tweaked on the fly and because of that I can see how this would become a really interesting and useful tool for people that like to play semi-improvised live sets. One of the cool things that you can do with the MIDI Cake ARP is utilise the MIDI input functionality. Effectively, by feeding in different notes or chords into ARP, it will shift the arpeggiations in rather pleasing ways. This means that you can create generative melodic patterns they shift in a way that would actually be really quite difficult to program manually or even just to think of.
Similarly, you could also just use it as an accompaniment to something else that you're playing depending on the particular mode that you've got it set in. Now in some of the other videos I've seen, most people are playing it with a MIDI keyboard where they're inputting notes uh, from the keys and you know that's fine and that's pretty cool, it is one way that you can use it. But for me what I thought would be more interesting would be to feed in notes from a sequencer that's running. So in the next example I've got my Dirty Wave M8 set up to do just that. Because the ARP can act as a USB host, I've plugged my Dirty Wave M8 directly into it and I don't need any separate box or anything which is really pretty cool. The M8 here is acting as the master clock, it is playing a drum loop whilst sending notes out to the MIDI cake ARP which in turn is then sending MIDI data back into the M8 to play the various synth engines across four of its channels, which sounds complicated uh, but um, it's not really. Now because there are four different arpeggiators within the MIDI cake ARP, that means that it pairs particularly nicely with a polyphonic synthesizer like the OB6 or the Vermona Performer. Similarly, because each of the arpeggiators can have a different MIDI channel assigned, you can use this really nicely with a multi timbre synthesizer like the Access Virus or the Behringer DeepMind or, I don't know, the Roland D110 or something like that. If you're somebody that finds it difficult to come up with inspiration or you particularly like improvised music and scenarios then the MIDI Cake ARP could be a really interesting tool to explore. Sometimes you just can't be arsed coming up with melodies deliberately or methodically and you just want to jam and equally the MIDI Cake ARP is great for that as well. There are a couple of other devices out there such as the Flame Arpeggiator in Eurorack or the Noodler but both of them seem a bit more complicated to me and haven't been as easy to just dive into as the MIDI Cake ARP has been. Overall this is a really cool wee thing that I've only just begun to scrape the surface of and begin to understand how I can really make the most of it. I have no doubt that people far smarter and more creative than I am are going to find some really impressive ways to make use of this in practice and I look forward to seeing that. If you're interested in finding out more I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can go and read the manual and everything else and until next time thanks for watching goodbye.